Once I'd had my stove installed and was able to maintain a warm boat, I left Middlewich, travelling south along the Trenton Mersey. Being high up among rolling countryside was exactly the type of scenery I'd been looking forward to. Now was the time to master operating locks, with nobody around to see. Along this stretch they were all single width locks of various depths. When single handed, a lot more effort and time is required to navigate through a lock. Instead of just being able to step off and deal with a lock, I need to moor up before and after each one. Ahead of me was Hare Castle Tunnel, which is north of Stoke-on-Trent. You need to agree a time of travel 48 hours beforehand, and I book mine for 8.30am, 72 hours ahead. Loads of time, or so I thought. The next day, in swept Storm Doris. It was described as a weather bomb. I eagerly watched the news and weather reports and knew I could get four locks under my belt early in the morning before it hit my location. Reports were coming in that up to 94 mile an hour winds were causing chaos directly west of me in North Wales. Doris was heading right in my direction. With my empty brand new narrowboat sitting very high in the water, the wind blew across the open fields, hitting me side on. It was so strong I couldn't move the boat away from the canal's edge, so I decided to moor up and wait it out. The next day I arrived at the north entrance of Harecastle Tunnel. The one and a half mile tunnel was once the longest canal tunnel in Britain. It's only wide enough to carry traffic in one direction, hence the requirement for canal and river trust booking. A staff member needs to be at each end of the tunnel to control who goes in. I was the only boat there, so had my safety briefing and off I went, trying to show a confident face. Oh dear, not a good start. In I went and it got cold and damp very quickly. Having a headlight and a horn are essential. I had wired up my light and CRT kindly lent me an air horn. Fire's got to be out or very, very low. Um, dogs and children inside, so Molly's got to stay inside. Um, what else is there? If I break down or if there's an engine problem or diesel runs out, um, I've got to give a long blast on the horn every 30 seconds and then they will reply with three short blasts to effectively acknowledge that they've heard me. Um, if I'm not out of the tunnel within an hour and a half then they send their search teams in. So that could have been I've had a panic attack or I've hit my head on the roof because it does get quite low. It felt like I was travelling into the centre of the earth but eventually I could see a very small light in the distance. Halfway through the tunnel, rusty coloured mud and water gushed onto my stern from what looked like a stream pouring out of the tunnel's wall. I kept on going. As I got closer to the south exit, the noise of fans got really loud and then turned off. The exit door then swung open and I could clearly see daylight. I had done it, and all in 47 minutes. So that was Hare Castle Tunnel. A very, very long tunnel. Speck of light in the distance, you could just about see as you've got about a third of the way through. Lots of water coming in on the sides. Got very low at some point. I thought it was going to hit the, the roof of my boat. But all in all, nothing to worry about. I then needed to stay put for a few days as the storm had caused a tree to fall across the canal. Apart from filming things like solar and boiler installs, which will be in future videos, I concentrated on getting back to Nottingham to fit Alice out. 
However, I clearly got the nomad bug, as within a few weeks I got bored and wanted to travel again. So next time, we pick up my adventure on the way to Stratford-upon-Avon. Don't forget to click subscribe if you want to follow my journey. See you next time.